Hi, I'm Xenowave, and today I'm going to show you how I made this sound, and others like it. Here it is in three types of context. Here's the first one. Here's the other context, the second one, this off. And here's the third context. So yeah, 808s, love these things, who doesn't? So the main concept behind 808s is really just having a sub, sub being, well, building off of a sine wave and usually uh, distorting it or, or filtering it, depending on whatever, you're, whatever you need or whatever you're uh, doing with it. So in this case, I have this sine wave that I randomly drew in these harmonics for and let's go ahead and get the raw sound and I have this and all I'm doing to operator one is uh, I have this envelope drawn uh, I believe to the half note yeah to the half note make sure your envelope is on um, and same for the piss envelope I have well, not the same. <laughs> I have this sweep, like I'm making a kick. So I have it on, oh, it's not even on tempo or global. Nonetheless, I have it on the first bar. So I had that effect. If I turn it off. And I have the um, pitch envelope amount maxed out to four octaves. So it's, it's jumping four octaves above to the uh, main pitch I'm playing. And feel free to, to play with these parameters as needed. This is, this is a fully customizable sound. It's awesome. And then I go to filter one. Um, I'm just filtering out those higher um, harmonics and I'm distorting as well. So this, this is all the taste. So I put the cutoff at around 38%. Uh, I have a uh, lime low pass on, and it's on a high quality flat and triple mode, but it's all up to you. And I have the amp at 73%, and this is what my wave shaper looks like. Without the wave shaper, we have this. Pretty wimpy. But we start to get something with the first distortion on. And then I serialize uh, filter one into filter two. And I basically do the same process because it yields a different sound. So in this filter, I have a vanilla low pass, high quality, single mode, and a cutoff of 42%. Amp is almost about the same 77%, and wish shippers on, of course. And this is just the shape I picked for my wave shaper. The wave shaping really, I mean, it, it shapes the wave, you know? So let's demonstrate, actually. I want to, let's copy this. I'm just going to completely morph the sound just by randomly clicking around here. 
<laughs> so that's too much distortion in this case. Well, for some people. But yeah, low low frequency sounds are really sensitive to wave shaping. And that's, if, again, if that's too short, mess with the volume envelope, it makes a difference. So yeah, that's uh, uh, an approach to, to doing this. Um, so instead of drawing in random harmonics, let's so start from scratch again. We have our, our, our sub bass, this regular sine wave. This can also work as a as an 808, but like you won't be able to hear it on your phone your phone speaker or laptop speakers. That's what the uh, upper harmonics are for, shaping the sound and and more accessibility from from more sound systems. So uh, let's like raise attention. Sorry. So um, I'm going to link this video in the description, uh, the one I'm about to reference. Mr. Bill did an awesome video on sub bass about two years ago or so, and he, he mentioned that if you have your waveform at a higher amplitude over the whole cycle, then you'll have a, a better, you'll have a stronger bass, basically, because our ears... Uh, our ears determine loudness by um, amplitude over time instead of instantaneous, which I agree with it. It's a pretty sound argument hypothesis, you know. So if you shape your, your waveform like so to be uh, louder instead of quieter on, on like the edges of the, the single cycle, you'll have a better result, most likely. But if you like the timbre of a different shape, go for it. The world's yours. I rock with this. And you can you can either roll with this or you can right click on the waveform, click on convert shape to sign harmonics, and then you can really, really customize it. Um, this is assuming you're really comfortable with with additive synthesis. Alright, that's cool. And I'm just gonna run through the same filter setup. And then play it. Not the same, probably because the distortion um, is the same. Resonance really helps when it comes to making those crazier 808s. Alright, this amp as well. Yeah, we can keep on going and going. 
So that's another way of designing and fine tweaking your 808s. The last method I'm going to show you actually is basically ripping from a song. Oh, what's another better example? I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to pull from this one. So let's just uh, take this first. So yeah, you loop your song. That's not a perfect loop. That kind of bothers me. Alright, that's as good as it gets for now. And you route it to... Oh, this is, this is the one. So I'm going to master. Um, take your Maximus. Or even just a low-pass filter, really. A Maximus. And then your Edison. Alright. So basically, we're going to... Get the low frequencies and really filter it down. And then we focus in on where wherever the 808 is is pretty isolated. And we can adjust this. Something's okay. That's like a. Like this is the beginning of the next transient. So if I bring this. Okay. Cool. So you can either start by low, either like low passing it, or if you if you're lucky enough, you have an isolated. Get wait. Get Edison. Record it. And then. What was it? Was that it? Okay. So yeah, right down here on the snap icon, if you right click it, you can press um, snap to zero crossing. And what you can do is take this and it, it'll, if you, if you left, left click, it'll Highlight wherever your your waveform crosses zero, which means we can take this and throw it into Citrus and automatically have an 808. So let's delete the rest. Boom. There we go. Now we have a, a nice 808. Exactly it. Just have to throw on the volume envelope. So I'm gonna go down here, copy state, paste state, and then same with the pitch. And then we have it. And if, if it's if it's too quiet, like just raise the volume, the um, volume envelope. And you can just take this in for further tweaking and stuff. And that's just the, the oscillator alone, or operator alone. That's too much. Oh, we'll just have to do that. And yeah, that's really how you, how you can go about 808s. That's three ways. Um, and yeah, the, making making them sound strong in the mix, that's just a mixing thing. Just make sure you level your, your bass properly along with your, your kick or whatever synths are going on. And then you're really not going to get the strong 808 feeling until you master your, your track, until you have the finished product. That's just kind of how it is. Just a warning. But yeah, one last thing. Let's just kind of see what it sounds like if we throw it in uh, our little chain over here. Interesting. Oh, whoops. Not this guy. All right, 
so this is obviously too quiet. So I can either distort it in post processing or distort it more over here. Level it up. Right. Yeah, that's really it. You can get basically any type of 808 bass uh, with, with this information. So if you have any questions, please do let me know and have an awesome day.